All right, guys, welcome back. This is the part two of the secondary collision brake system malfunction and parking brake malfunction. So yesterday, when I had that um, check engine light, so when I was driving, I lost my cruise control. I lost my cruise control. I can't even speak right. I lost my cruise control, and then my car started slipping. I think that's the better word. Uh, the transmission starts slipping. Um, the RPM was very high, four to 5,000 RPM, but I'm dropping my speed. I'm not keeping up. I'm actually losing speed, but the RPM is high, and it feels like if it was a manual transmission, it feels like the clutch is slipping. That's how it feels like. And what I had to do was release my foot off the accelerator, let the car coast, and then resume stepping on the gas. Then I was able to pick up uh, the speed again. Then the transmission started acting normal. But I don't have the, the capability of uh, setting my my uh my cruise control and i have all this bun bunch of amber lights uh collision uh, pre-collision and all the warning lights that i had yesterday and then i stopped over at chevron um i cleaned out the two sensors the um, that sensor right here the camera and then this sensor right here, the radar. So, when I cleaned it, um, I was basically moving this thing. See how loose it is? I don't know if you can hear it. I was cleaning it and depressing it. Some of, some of the stuff I did uh, by cleaning this thing it was not on. Because I would clean it and then clean it again. Um, and I was able to move the plate or the plastic cover for the radar and I didn't get to video it so you don't see it on the video but I was able to shake it or move it then I went to the restroom then I got out and bought some coffee so by the time I got out it was like 10 15 minutes later and then I started the car the check engine light went away everything cleared so it gave me a false um, sense of that I fixed the the problem but actually I was just barely touching the problem the problem is the sensor the radar the problem is so Finally, it cleared, and I was able to drive another three, four hours with no problem. And then I went checked in with my hotel. The following day, I started it up. No problem. No check engine light. And then at the end, or in the middle of the day, of the day I went to Costco and everything in California. And then I was driving about 10 miles an hour. Not, I'm not using any cru uh, cruise control. I'm going about 10 miles an hour around Costco looking for a parking spot. And then, bam, the check engine light came on and all of that collision, blah, 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 came on again. And I'm like, what the hell? So I cleaned the cameras again and the camera and the radar. And this time I was tapping it harder. Um, maybe I'm shaking something in there. And then after a while, um, well, after I, I was shaking it or cleaning it, cleaning it and tapping on it, um, my kids and I, we went uh, and Costco started shopping. And then when we got out, check engine light. And all the collision, pre-collision, the uh, parking brake system problem, they all went away. 
Now, um, towards the evening, I was driving back. All of a sudden, uh, of course, I was in the freeway and I'm driving. All of a sudden, my check engine light turned on again uh, on the collision, secondary collision, uh, parking brake or parking brake system lights are on. You can see it on the alert. Uh, if you have a Corolla, you'll see it. Uh, check on the alert. It'll tell you what it's telling you, uh, what's wrong with it. So you have, I, I got two, the uh, secondary collision, and then the second one was um, parking brake system. So two I was getting. And then on the alert, I only got one, the emergency. Uh, the, the alert was parking brake system. So, I didn't have cruise control anymore. So, I needed the cruise control because I got a four-hour drive. So, uh, oh yeah, and the after when it uh, when the light the amber lights turned on. Once again, the engine. This time, I was more ready. I was paying more attention. I noticed I was stepping on the gas. I was not developing speed. I was losing speed. RPM was about 5,000 RPM. I was not maintaining my speed. Even though I lost the cruise control and I had my foot on the gas, as, as soon as I lost the cruise control, I stepped on the gas to maintain my speed. But the RPM is the only thing that's increasing or boosting everything else. The speed, I was slowing down. I think I was down to like 50 miles an hour. So what I did is I released my foot off the gas and I let the engine um, calm down or basically go to, to idle. And then I slowly depressed the, the accelerator and then I was able to develop the speed the car started acting normal, except for the amber lights about the collision, as, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, secondary collision, and what's the other one, the uh, parking brake system. So I'm driving with no um, cruise control. And I know when I tap on this, I tap on that radar, I'm able to get it back. So I'm suspecting it's the radar. All right, so since I suspect the radar is faulty or malfunctioning, I was thinking about unplugging it. But first, let me show you the warning, the amber lights that I got. Uh, when I have this issue and then I'll show you the amber lights and the warning lights after I unplug it so let me show you right now so this is the warning or amber lights check engine lights when I was having the issue or the problem this which is this is what I saw and this is what I was getting okay so here I'm showing you that I disconnected the radar and that's the, uh, the connector right there and that's the radar right there and um, I'm going to show you that I can drive this car and have a normal cruise control or, you know, what I mean by normal means the cruise control back in the 80s you just have a cruise control but it doesn't have any sensors the sensors doesn't work anymore but it'll hold the speed for you and then when you tap on the brakes it will release or turn off the the cruise control so it's like an old school cruise control it doesn't have any of the um, sensors now let me show you what it shows on the dashboard See, that's the amber lights I get. There is no check engine light. And then here, let me show you what the infotainment uh, shows. Um, 
Here the vehicle alert. The vehicle alert no longer say um, parking brake um, fault. All right, pay attention to the middle section you will see that the orange, the dark orange one, it means, um, right there, it means that those three features no longer work. And in order to activate the cruise control, I have to remove or choose the cruise control mode and take it off from the adaptive, adaptive cruise control because the adaptive cruise control requires the camera or the radar so since we the radar is not there anymore because it's unplugged I have to use the cruise control the regular cruise control and also you'll notice with this on uh, with the radar unplugged the automatic parking works now when I put it on park it activates when I put it on drive, it deactivates. The, what I'm re referring to is the emergency brake. See? With, with this situation, I can uh, put it on park or drive, and the handbrake or the parking brake will respond, respond correspondingly. So if I put it on park, it'll apply the brakes. If I put it on drive, it will remove the parking brake now i'm going to demonstrate to you guys um, that i'm going to drive this thing with a cruise control um but it's not adaptive cruise control it's just a regular cruise control like an old school 90 or late 1980s cruise control meaning it will hold that speed but when you step on the brake it will cancel it it will cancel the cruise control but it won't use any sensors. That all the sensors now are all disabled. So in this situation, I'd rather have this and have my cruise control. Than not having the cruise control. So right here I'm demonstrating that if you unplug it. Now you can get your cruise control back. But remember guys, all the other sensors are no longer working. All the other uh, LDA, RDA, PCS, none of those stuff were working. This is like, it becomes a, a normal or regular old school uh, cruise control. So by unplugging the that, all your sensors are disabled. Uh, your PCS, the pre-collision system, it's not going to work. The LDA, uh, lane departure uh, assistant, that's not going to work. The RDA um, or the PDA, um, all those sensors that assists you in driving, like when you get out of the lane, it'll try to put you back in uh, uh, back in the, in the center of the lane. Or if you get too close to a car, it will slow down for you. Um, all those, you know, uh, special sensors that comes with um, if the radar was working. But with the radar not working by unplugging it, you will have, you will gain back your cruise control. And the cruise control, um, when I tried it, is able to hold the speed that you want. But the only way for you to, to cancel the cruise control, you got to step on the brake or just turn off on your, from your steering wheel, cancel the cruise control. Remember, it doesn't have the uh, sensors anymore. But for me, I, I need the cruise control. If I'm driving four hours uh, at nighttime or daytime, whatever, but if I'm driving far away for a long time, I mean, 
I need the cruise control. I can't hold my foot at 65 or 70 miles an hour. I can't hold that. I can't do that no more. So cruise control is very important to me. I know I'm having a problem with the, the radar. I'll get that fixed or replace that. I think it's 150 bucks for the sensor. I mean the radar. But right now, at least I'm able to use the car with the cruise control. So you could tell the difference between an unplugged one versus the one that's acting faulty by looking at the, the, the video that I just created. So my suspicion is correct. It's that, that radar because every time I clean it or tap it, it's, it goes back to normal. So it was just a coincidence that I was cleaning it. You know, because it wasn't making sense to me. Like, why would insect get in that, uh, that radar, maybe two or three insects, and they would disable uh, the whole system? That's crap. So by me cleaning it, um, I was accidentally touching the radar, and I was making some type of disturbance inside the radar and it was able to restore it back but it would be restored back to normal but it would not last because i'll hit a bump boom it disengages check engine light comes on amber lights comes on i lose my speed and i'm like 5,000 rpm stepping on the gas trying to maintain my speed because i lost my cruise control it, that is more pro problematic to me I mean, you got a semi-truck behind my back, you know, like trying to push me. So that was kind of dangerous too. But anyway, so um, I don't recommend you guys unplugging uh, your, your system. I recommend that you guys get it fixed. Go to your dealer and get it fixed. I was just merely showing you guys what I was doing. Um, how it, what I'm doing and what's what's going on with the car by unplugging it, and I'm just confirming that I am having a malfunction, malfunctioning radar. That's all I'm doing. Um, I don't recommend you guys driving without the radar. I recommend that you guys get this check engine light, amber lights, go to the dealer, get them uh, fix it, because the wiping part. Uh, the wiping the camera and wiping down the uh, the uh, radar that's all bullshit I thought it helped but actually actually it didn't help I accidentally bumped the radar and it fixed the the system uh, temporarily but it was not a permanent fix because I found that the following day, uh, if you followed the whole story. So now, now I know that the radar is broken. I just needed 150 bucks to fix it. Right now, the it's unplugged. I still have my cruise control. Okay. But I'm going to fix it right by replacing the, the radar. I can't believe the radar like this failed. Um, prematurely but anyways guys this so this video is just for information only guys information so uh, at least now you can sleep at, uh, sleep uh, at night knowing what the hell is going on with your car that's it guys